family's extremely excited about that. And, uh, you know, no bad is to his tremendous honor, you know, for as much respect as he has for Coach Wood and Coach Southall and this entire program and the city and everything else. You know, we, we're, we're really excited about it. That, that had a way of writing stories, you know, and, uh, and, and telling and tell the tell an accurate picture without, you know, I always like to say that wrote a classic character. You know, he did. And uh, how do they tell those stories without, you know, putting the kid in a bad light or putting the coach in a bad light, whether they were, you know, whether it was one of ours from Brownwood or whether it was from the opposing team that's character. And I, I think that's part of why there's so much respect for those two guys that ride. And, and that's one thing I, you know, I know that Matt did so well is he had a way of, again, telling that story and, and describing what happened in the game without, you know, without throwing someone under the bus, so to speak. And uh, he just did it so well and just eloquently, of course, you know, that was, you know, that whole tree just showed some of the awards that he won and, and, and the one he's fixing to receive here in a few weeks. And, uh, you know, and I think people understand that and I think they respect that. Uh, after the 78 state title game, and I, I was just a little kid, but mom and I were sitting in the car out of the parking lot at the stadium, we used to see from Gainesville. And, uh, of course, it's late, and a lot of the lights are being turned off in the stadium. And, and, of course, I'm sitting there waiting on that like they always were. And next thing you see, you see a typewriter case fall over a fence. Uh, and then I see the bad scale of the fence, they already locked the gate on. You know? and, uh, and that was pretty good. College is home for a weekend, and Brown had a playoff basketball game. Of course, Dad, I didn't think they Dad said, you can go? Sure. So we hop in the car and take off, and I realized we're not quite headed in the direction of Fort Worth, which is where the game was. And Dad said, well, we got to go by and pick up Dallas. Now, imagine what I'm telling you here. I'm in a car for roughly four hours with Bill Stovall in Dallas, Houston. You know the Brown sports history lesson I got that night? <laughs> now, it wasn't the first time I've been with those two guys, but I think you know, this time I was old enough to appreciate it. When you do something for nearly 40 years, you can't stand here and call people by name. Someone's getting left out. Someone, uh, you know, is not getting mentioned. I'm not doing that. But just know that looking around this room, there's so many people here that are precious to our family, and, and we thank you for being here. We do. <laughs> to the players, you know, thank you to the players. If you put on the maroon and white, thank you. Thank you. you you're the reason that uh, the dad got up at 5 in the morning or whatever god-awful hour he was waking up in the mornings. You're the reason he got up with did what he did and enjoyed doing what he was doing. To the uh, coaches, you know, I, I can't thank you enough for, for the way that, that you allowed Dad to be an extension of your staff. You know, he always viewed himself as that, but you allowed him to feel that way. And thank you so much. You know, Coach Wood and Coach Southall meant the world to Dad. And, you know, when, you, when you're like Dad, you grow up without much of a dad around the house. You know, those two guys were father figures for him. But the football aside, you know, they treated him like family. Y'all treated our family, you know, like family, and thank you. You know, that dad, dad, dad was the biggest sports fan I ever knew. There's no question about it. You know, he had the, he had more knowledge, you know, some of it useless, but he had more knowledge than anybody I knew. You know, it wasn't uncommon when I was a kid, the phone would ring in the evening and not answer it. Some on the other side say, Mitch, is your daddy there? Like, yes, sir, just a second. I'd have the phone to dad. And he'd patiently sit there and he'd listen for a few minutes, and then you finally hear dad say something like, well, you know, Scott Lancaster was our quarterback on the 78 title team, and Tyler Tabor was on the 81 title team. We, obviously, he was either solving a bad or fight or something, but he, you know, that was pretty common, you know. Uh, but, you know, more than being a sportsman, Dad was the biggest Brown McLean sports fan that I ever knew. You know, there's no doubt about it. He understood what was represented every time we put on the room and light. He got it. He understood. Mainly, I think he understood that it was just different here than it was in most places. It really was. Personally, I believe that's why Dad's stories were so pleasurable to read. It was personal to him. You as a player were personal to him. Your children, when they played, they were personal to Dad. The coaches, you know, my gosh, y'all were personal to him. But I think mainly more than anything, the community of Brownwood was special to Dad. You know, he, uh, he always had the respect of, of our opponents. You know, uh, he didn't know how to trash a kid, whether it was ours or theirs. He obviously had the respect of all his colleagues. He got offers. You name the major, you know, newspaper market in Texas, he got an offer, but he wasn't buying. He wasn't going anywhere. I like, you know, Dad had, he had the right perspective. He understood that he was writing about kids. 
and buy kids his dreams of being brown and white. And uh, that's why he, he was always a positive light shed on, shed on you as a player. But without question, the honor that, that Dad is getting that we're most proud of is the one he's getting tonight. It's personal. Thank you. God bless you.